Hello, everybody. Welcome back, my dears. This is Menopause Taylor bringing you your menopause your way and also menopause as the state, the state of menopause in the world today. My job is to tailor all the options to your personal situation so that you can have your menopause your way. And one of the things that can determine how you manage your menopause is fibroids. So if you're just joining me now and you haven't heard the previous two podcasts, you need to go back and have and listen to those first because this podcast is a sequel <laughs> to the two that that came before it. <laughs> if you listen to this one before watching, if you listen to this one before listening to those two, you'll be shooting yourself in the foot in a way, <laughs> or shooting yourself in the head, I don't know which, <laughs> but I guarantee that you'll understand absolutely everything I teach you. But I can only guarantee that if you do everything in order. So the only way to actually learn anything is to do it in order. Otherwise, you confuse yourself even more. Just you got to believe me on that. <laughs> so here's where we are now. I taught you that fibroids are benign overgrowths of the fibrous tissue in your muscular uterus. And they grow because of the stimulation they get from estrogen. So every menstrual cycle you have and every pregnancy you have causes them to grow. And then I taught you that perimenopause can make bleeding from your fibroids worse because that's when you lose your progesterone, but your estrogen stays normal. But when post-menopause rolls around and you lose your estrogen, your fibroids can settle down. They'll stop growing and they'll stop bleeding, but they won't shrink and they won't disappear. And the reason they settle down is because there's no estrogen around to stimulate them. But you've also learned that the one surefire way to alleviate all your symptoms of menopause is to take estrogen. And in the, in the podcast on the estrogen window of opportunity, you learn that taking estrogen can prevent the diseases that are associated with menopause, which include heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's disease. So here you are at postmenopause with no more growth or bleeding of your fibroids. And the question is, can you take HRT if you have fibroids? So that's what this podcast is about. Can you take HRT if you have fibroids? It sounds like a catch-22 situation, doesn't it? And actually it is. You know how I've told you over and over again that everything has both advantages and disadvantages and that menopause management is all about trade-offs. Well, this is just another example of that. Here's the trade-off. If you do take HRT with fibroids, it may cause your fibroids to grow and it may result in abnormal bleeding. But it would definitely alleviate your symptoms of menopause and prevent the diseases associated with menopause. And if you don't take HRT with fibroids, your fibroids will stop growing and won't cause bleeding, but you will probably have much more severe symptoms of menopause because nothing else will work as well as estrogen to alleviate them. And you won't get the benefits of preventing heart attack osteoporosis, or Alzheimer's. So it is indeed a catch-22. Do you remember what I've taught you about guidelines? They're the roadmaps that doctors follow to help you manage your menopause. Now, they aren't carved in stone, and there are many different sets of guidelines. So they do not constitute the menopause Bible or anything like that. But, some insurance companies use them to deny payment for various things. So there are no, no specific guidelines for fibroids at menopause, none at all. So that means doctors can decide for themselves how to manage menopause with fibroids. 
And remember when I taught you the menopause mantras? Well, there's no mantra for fibroids at menopause either. And that's another reason doctors decide for themselves how to manage fibroids at menopause. So what you have is a situation in which different doctors will manage your fibroids differently depending on their level of knowledge and comfort with HRT in the presence of fibroids. So let me just teach you some of the things doctors use to decide how to manage your fibroids at menopause. First, no two women are alike. Every situation is unique. Do not ever assume that your situation is like your mother's or your sister's or your girlfriend's. And it's never exactly like what you read on the internet either. So I'm giving you general principles about how your doctor decides whether or not you can take HRT. If you want me to address your situation specifically, go to my website and schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. My website is menopausetailor.me. I'll tailor everything specifically to you. But for purposes of this podcast, these principles are general, not personal. Do you know what the Hippocratic Oath is? It's a vow that all doctors make when they become doctors. And it goes like this. First, do no harm. So the most fundamental thing your doctor uses to decide how to manage your menopause or your fibroids or anything else is that oath. Your doctor is thinking, is it better to do nothing or to do something? Unfortunately, in the context of menopause management, doctors have adopted much more of a hands-off approach than they should have. And much of that is due to the WHI study that I've taught you about in previous podcasts. That one study sent a ripple of fear through both the public and the medical communities that actually became a tidal wave. Though we now know that the reports about that study were flawed, all the fear that emanated from it remains. So you know that HRT can alleviate your symptoms of menopause and prevent diseases associated, associated with menopause. But it can also cause your fibroids to continue growing or to bleed. So which is more harmful? The diseases associated with menopause, such as heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's, or the fibroids. And that brings me to the second principle your doctor uses to decide whether or not to give you HRT if you have fibroids and menopause. The balancing act. I've given you an entire podcast about the balancing act. The balancing act is where you have to weigh the benefits of each option against the risks of each option. And since we're all unique, the weights that you assign to each factor are your own. Something that is very important to me may not be very important to you at all. My risks for diseases may be very different from your risks for diseases. One woman may be very comfortable with HRT. Another may be very fearful of it. All these factors go on that scale to create your balancing act. So one woman may think the benefits of taking HRT to prevent diseases are worth the risk of causing her fibroids to grow or to bleed. Another woman may think the risk of causing her fibroids to grow or bleed are not worth the benefits of preventing those diseases. It's actually shocking how differently people feel about these things. I have seen and heard just about every opinion on this stuff that you can possibly imagine. And that is why the education I offer you is called Your Menopause, Your Way. <laughs> the third principle your doctor uses to make a decision about taking HRT in the presence of fibroids is consideration of the alternatives. In other words, if HRT is beneficial, but your fibroids are the only impediment to taking HRT, what are the alternatives for treating your fibroids so that you can take HRT? Let's say 
that the only way your doctor will give you HRT is if you get rid of your fibroids. And what if surgery is the only way to get rid of your fibroids? Well, then it becomes a balancing act between the benefits of having the surgery and the risks of having this and the risks of having the surgery. If you're a healthy, non-obese, non-smoker, the surgery may be very low risk. But if you're an unhealthy, obese smoker, the surgery may be high risk. You see, all these factors go into deciding whether or not HRT is right for you or not. And be aware of the fact that when you already have fibroids that are great big masses in your uterus, it's going to be more difficult to find other things that can develop in or near your uterus, like cancers. People miss early diagnoses of cancers a lot because of benign things that just confuse the picture. And that's what can happen when it comes to fibroids. People tend to want quick fixes. They don't want inconvenience or anything that requires a lot of work or any delays in getting what they want. But sometimes there are just no there just are no quick fixes. So this education that I give you is not about learning how to get a quick fix. It's about learning how to logically manage your menopause in the way that's best for you. So all the things I've mentioned thus far serve to determine whether or not you can take HRT with your fibroids. But let's say your doctor says, nope, you cannot take HRT. What then? Let's say your doctor says, yeah, no problem. You can take HRT. Well, if your doctor says you can take HRT, there are different ways to take it. I've taught you about two different regimens for taking HRT. Let me remind you what they are. There is the cyclic regimen and there is the continuous regimen. The cyclic regimen, as implicated by its name, mimics your cycles. So when you used to have your own menstrual cycles, you had a dance between estrogen and progesterone every single month. Estrogen rose in the first half of your cycle and progesterone rose in the second half of your cycle. The rise in estrogen was what stimulated your fibroids to grow. So, a cyclic regimen that mimics that same pattern of cycles will also cause your fibroids to grow, even though the hormones are HRT instead of your normal menstrual cycle. That cyclic pattern is what stimulates the fibroids. So, a cyclic HRT regimen involves taking estrogen all by itself in the first half of the cycle and taking estrogen with progesterone in the second half. And because a cyclic regimen mimics your cycles, you have a period. So you will still have periods on a cyclic regimen of HRT. Well, cycles are what made your fibroids grow in the first place. So if you use a cyclic regimen, you're likely to have continued growth of your fibroids. And when you bleed, it's likely to be heavy. Now, let's contrast that with a continuous regimen. The continuous